Colossians, um, while the worship was going on, I saw a very unnecessary vision. Oh, God. Unnecessary means it's upsetting me, that's what. A very ugly looking serpent. Serpent itself looks ugly, but uh, more ugly looking. I cannot describe because I don't know how to say it. Coming from the earth, straight up. So when I see this, I'm already getting upset, you know, because it's like. Uh. So while the worship is going on, the Lord said it's, it's coming to deceive many. The job of deception. And then false signs and wonders, which is written in the Bible, right? When I study a lot more, I will tell you a lot more. But on the flip side of the coin, we have to worry about the false signs and false wonders and false miracles or healings only if we are not strong in the truth. When you are established in the truth, you are not worried about the trickery of the enemy simply because you are not given to tricks. You are given to the truth. Correct? When your mind is open to tricks, then you are attracted to it. Give an example because some, many of us, we get caught up into this thing. You think about it for a minute, okay? Because I believe this is perhaps one of those reasons why suddenly the Lord is leading me to teach the word passage by passage. It is no, not necessarily whether the word is this, is this the word of the Lord, we get caught up. When the word goes in, it builds a foundation. Huh? We get very troubled when we see people building foundations because they, dig, they got to dig the earth. It's very dirty, it's very ugly, it's very a lot of work. But they are doing all of that so that the building stands. Correct? When you see your houses are standing there for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, the foundation is there. It is standing. When you are doing renovation, you are renovating the living inside. You are not digging the foundation and renovating that. That's solid. Correct? So I, I believe that's what God is doing us without we asking because the Lord is laying a foundation of his truth into our lives and into our spirit man at the same time telling us what the enemy is trying to do but we don't have to pay attention to it. We have to know it but we don't have to pay attention to it because we are busy establishing ourselves in the truth. Now, there was a... When I bought the house when I was 23. You know, Singapore houses are expensive. The agent tricked me with wrong information, which is not the truth. Instead of having to pay 15,000 deposit, we end up needed to pay $25,000 deposit. Now, where am I going to go for the money? And... Uh, it's a long story. I'll just tell you the last part of the story first. So the last part of the story is I had to go, even though I'm already in full time, I have to go back to work for two years as the Lord let me. And guess who was the prophet who come and gave me the last final word to confirm? It was my mother. She was praying. And she came and spoke to me. You know, I was praying for you because of this problem uh, that happened. Because with all my heart and mind, I will never do things to embarrass the Lord or to put his name down as I'm in the ministry. Either taking unnecessary loan or telling stories to people, creating issues, stuff like that, okay? 
But this happened, no matter how I calculated it, the agent wrongly calculated and with an intention to deceive, deceive that's how he did it. Okay, so, so my mother said you should go to work instead of putting the Lord's name to shame. You're a young man. Work hard. The church is small. It doesn't require you in the daytime. It's only in the night all your services. Work hard. So I took it as a word from the Lord and I went to work for two years. I committed. I told the Lord, when the loan is paid off, I'll come back into full time again. That means I'll just resign and come back to church work. But I did not drop on my commitment in any way. I sleep about four hours a day because after that is prayer meetings, preparing of sermons, and, and the Lord will wake me up in the night. This is the word of the Lord, and I'll be writing out stuff like that. All is going on, okay? I will go to work at 6 o'clock in the morning, come back 10 o'clock in the night so that I'll have overtime pay to pay off the loan, but I calculated two years. At the end of the few months of the two years, my manager, it's a Christian company, okay? My manager called me, he said, we want to promote you as a supervisor in that, and we want to send you to a diploma course on sales and marketing uh, so that you can come into the managerial level of work. You'll get easily about $3,500 a month. And, uh, but uh, you have to sign a bond for two years, okay? My question to you is, many people will start praying, is this the Lord's open door? Isn't it? I didn't even think about it for three seconds because I made a commitment to the Lord, you see. I don't have to pray. I don't even have to blink what is the Lord saying. I don't have to. Because the Lord, I made a vow. And the vow was, at the end of the two years, I'll come out. See, sometimes it is easier to walk with God when you are not double-minded and not tempted. When you are tempted, we use the Christian word, or oh, maybe the Lord is the one who's bringing. We somehow throw it back and then, can you please pray? What happened to the vow that we made? You, you see? If we have a single-minded devotion. Now, what I say, or what I just told you, may or may not really apply to all of you in general, but it does apply for those who are called by God in full-time ministry. To be fair. Because when certain leadings are very specific, we must know how to walk in specifics. But when you are working and what you are doing now, you are not have a specific call, but you have a general call to serve God. And your call increases as you love the Lord more. So therefore, this arrangement is not for you, but I'm encouraging you. When we have made a single-minded devotion to serve God, there is no reason to pray again and again and get confused because you have to honor what you say to the Lord because God honors what He says, correct? The question is, do you honor what you say to the Lord? Why am I pull this story into this tonight's uh, uh, encouragement uh, of the word? Is because when you know the truth, the truth sets you free. Therefore, when false signs, you know something is going on here. False doctrines, false signs, false healings. There is no reason to even wonder these fellows are right or wrong because you know the truth. Sometimes, you are not, it is not given to you to discern. Some of these guys have to be discerned by those who are walking in the call of God in a higher way. Fair enough? Now, I may say nothing is wrong with my hand, there is no germ, but you ask the scientist to put my hand under the lap and they say, oh, you know how many germs are there? Because they've got all the instruments to check things out. That's their job. But to average person, it looks all nice. So I think the deception of the enemy is going to come through not as the entire package as false, like a wrong religion. Rather, it's going to be sandwiched in between the truth. There are false things inside. 
One, one small bacteria is enough to knock you out, isn't it? So that's all we need. That one small thing, which is very important source of disinformation that goes in. Why it goes in? Because we are attracted for knowledge. So I want to encourage you to be attracted to the truth. So one of the safe, safety net, it has to be in the word. It has to be understood plainly without unnecessary gimmicks and understanding. Plain English. Even if you use Greek, plain English, but when you look at it, this is how you understand it. You allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Amen? Okay. I'll bring it to the Word. Let's see what happens. In Colossians chapter 2, the last part which uh, Sunday we were not able to touch because of the way the presence of God came and blessed us. The book of Colossians chapter 2. Verse 16, Therefore, let no one, you know, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink with regard to a festival or a new moon and a, a, or a Sabbath. These are the shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. He said, let no one disqualify you. I want you to look at verse 18 now, very interestingly. How will people disqualify you? Now, Paul is uh, saying, and let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism. You know what is that? Mysticism. Okay? Insisting that there is a realm of the spirit world. Or worship of angels. Going in detail about visions. I feel guilty that I'm not talking about me or anybody else. Sometimes I wonder, Pro, Paul, what's wrong with you, man? You are touching certain areas because it seems like it is through visions and dreams God is speaking to the present day prophets, isn't it? So am I supposed to reject because this is a favorite verse of the evangelicals? Favorite verse. Look at what it says. Does Paul see vision? Absolutely. He was for three years thought by God in visions. Angels came and ministered. He said in Arabia he was taken by the Lord and he learned everything. What happened during the time of the Last Supper, how he was betrayed, how he was crucified, he saw the whole picture by visions. So now there is a catch for us to pay attention. He said, those who are going on in detail about visions, now, are you ready for the catch? Yeah. The catch is, the issue is not about the asceticism or the definitely not worship of angels because that's what people were falling into the bracket. At this stage, at this stage of writing, there is no Roman Catholic Church yet, at this stage. It was the Jews, but the Jews themselves were already corrupted, not the Jews. A corruption in Jewish worship, of spirit worship, Kabbalah, Canaanites, animistic worship of the foreign gods, worship of trees, worship of things, worship of creatures, I mean creatures, snakes and serpents and whatever else, remember? So those corruption was already there. In the Old Testament, the Jews mixed together with the people and they mixed and the Canaanite gods, so everything is already mixed in. Now, God is calling not only the Gentiles, but the Jews themselves to come out of idolatry. Are you following? Yeah. 
Therefore, when there is a worship of angels, worship of other things, worship of false gods, this has been applied right from the Old Testament. Now, to make it worse, when the Christianity during the times of Paul is going through the channels of Greece and Rome, they already have another bunch of gods to deal with. So what people do, they do synchronization. They mix everything together and they adopt. When the enemy cannot knock you out, then he will ask you to adapt. No absolutes. Come on, just bring it in. Hinduism in good, is in, in that is, they will just bring it in. That is why in Asia when you say, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Oh, he got saved. No, not true. He believes in all gods because in Asia, people have a respect for any gods. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. You are safe. No. He just said he believed in Jesus. He did not say Jesus is the only God. That's when your salvation is complete. So sometimes when we say yes, or you see thousands of people accepted Christ, that's a nice evangelistic pickup line. It is not. The salvation is complete only when he renounces and accepts Jesus as the Lord and Savior, and there is none other besides you. Are you following? Okay. So now we have, I have to give you this background knowledge in order to understand why Paul is saying worship of angels, where did he come from? Because when angelic activity was coming in, people started to include that as part of their worship. And then, of course, Roman Catholicism came about, and, and all that is already compounded in, you see. Because people need to have a kind of a form to worship God. So when you cannot knock them and change them, then you start corrupting them. Reducing the original power of God. Are you following? Okay. So now Paul is saying, if all these things is right, you will not have the symptoms. Look at the symptoms. It will puff up without reason by his sensuous mind. Now this is the catch. How do I know that fellow who's teaching? The doctrine is given. Or the church that is experiencing revival when they say God is moving in our wood. How do we know whether it's right or wrong? You got to pay attention to the fruit and whether it is puffing them up without reason and there is sensuality, sensuous mind. You see? So let's put Sadhu on the table since he's the guy who's all the time seeing visions and saying, uh, you know, he goes for hours talking about his visions, right? But is he puffed up? Is it operating from a sensuous mind? So he's not, he's a holy man of God, therefore it doesn't belong to him. You, you, you see? We have to judge. If you don't see the lifestyle of a person having visions and they're living a very loose lifestyle, then something is wrong with the message they are carrying. Now, there is another catch to it. Sometimes God gives you a very high level of revelation to a, to a walk in a person's life which doesn't match yet. They are still a work in progress, but there is still a level of godliness for God to give them, isn't it? Because you, didn't, you cannot steal a godly revelation. The source is only God. You cannot steal it. And that is why revelation will first bring conviction into you first. God, I'm not ready for this level. I need to pray. Because God is showing you that you are working a change. But if you're not changing and you're continuing to do drama on stage and the whole church with a sensuous mind, then we'll realize now the source is wrong. Because if it's from the holy God, it will produce Holiness. We cannot just write off everybody who see vision. You see, there is a catch that he's giving us. Is it puffing up? Okay? 
Now, many feel disqualified. Paul said, let no one disqualify you. But many feel disqualified just because they cannot see angels. They feel disqualified because they cannot experience heaven. You feel disqualified when you cannot pray longer. Or you, you can't see vision at a length. But Paul says, don't let those things disqualify you. Somebody say, what? It should, it, it, it should stir your spiritual hunger. When it stirs your spiritual hunger means I'm qualified in the presence of God to seek from God, but it shouldn't disqualify you to say, I'm not worthy. You know, I'm not. That, that's a silly thing. That's not what it should do. Everything about God should stir your holy passion. Amen? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after His righteousness, and you what? Shall be? Exactly. Everything about God will stir you. It will stir you to come towards, but it should not make you feel disqualified. If you are dealing with those things, Paul says, let no one disqualify you. I'm not seeing vision like them. Okay, pray. Instead of feeling disqualified. Are you following? Then he, he, he adds on to another thing. Are, are you learning something? Yes. Paul says you should personally, or don't let any, another person put you down based on such matters. What is this? Number one, experience of spirituality. I just mentioned the word to you, asceticism. Very interesting word. Mysterious spirituality. Or different levels with God. Good to know. It shouldn't make you feel disqualified. It, does it puff you up? Now, I want to show you another challenge that Paul was having with the same people, the Greek people, because there is a group of people who, who are the Jews converted, living among them. Do not touch this. Do not touch that. Do not touch this. Do not touch that. Now, Paul has to handle, you see, because the Jews... The Jewish disciples did not have the intelligence, if I will politely say, I'm not sure, but I'm saying because ministering among the Gentiles was not given to them. So they don't really need to have the tactfulness how to handle all this. The problem with us many times, we comment on things which are not given to you. We comment about other ministries and how they are doing it when that cup of tea is not given to you. Paul has to handle this. And now Paul gives you another one, verse 21. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 21. He said, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. Referring to the things that all perish as they are used according to human precepts and teaching. Now, have you heard the word that we should, should teach the word K author? Precept by precept, line by line. Fantastic. But the origin mustn't be human. You see what it's right? You see what is written there, right? Human precepts and teaching. People, oh, you know, we must learn line by line. Good. But the origin mustn't be human. It has to be of God. Because if it's human, somehow it will fall into legalism. It will just fall into that. Oswald Sanders said, By nature, the heart of man is like a jungle. Only when it's cultivated... And trimmed, it will become a garden for the Lord. The very garden that you work hard on, leave it alone for a few months, it will become a jungle, isn't it? The heart of man is the same. What you have cultivated with your spirituality and train it, and you lift it alone, the worldliness will just come inside. What happened? No, I got to keep cultivating, you see. I got to keep pushing forward. According to human precepts and teachings, they know how to mastercraft their thought. 
You talk about Mormons, they are not wrong. They, they are right because they've got their theology in place. You talk about uh, Jehovah Witness, they've got the entire Bible rewritten. They say that's their revelation. The Mormons come out of their own second Bible, they will put it all together, right? The, uh, the angel came and gave them. They believe in what they are saying. So every false teaching has some kind of a foundation theology based on it. But the truth has to be built in the people who believe that this is God's word. So build yourself in the truth. Correct? Now, there's another thing that Paul now says, verse 23. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom. Look at that. When you look from far, it appears wise. It appears wow. Such an intellect built. It has an appearance of wisdom. Are you ready? Look for the fruit. It promotes what? <laughs> yeah. So we are looking for the fruit, you see. So if God is showing to us there are false signs and false wonders and false this and false that, you got to look out for the fruit. If it's all twilling itself to become a self-made religion, Pay attention now. And the mysticism, oh, but whatever I say, it's not even in the Bible. Really? So we shouldn't take, you know, if it's not in the Bible, right? But it's there. Yeah, but I can know that in the afterlife. I'm, I'm, I'm sad to say this to you, you know, I'm very sad. Especially this error takes place among the charismatic community, the preachers, and we all try. If the fellow wants to stand up, he has to come up with a new teaching. He has to do the back roads and understand it differently because there is a persuasion and the need to be recognized. You see, the moment that ego and the self to be recognized is already there, rooted. As it grows, everything that comes out from it will be false. I've seen this many times in the people that I've helped in ministry to grow. I want to be famous, all that I want to fulfill. You know, I always wanted to be famous in the world, and I never had the chance. Now I'm in God. I'm going to take the stage. I'm going to take the platform. I'm going to be number one in everything I do, and I'll fulfill my childhood desire. Okay, great, but don't use God's platform for your childhood desire. How many worship leaders have said that? They find for the big churches and they write good songs and they are all in that list. We sing some of those songs. How ambition has insinuated their pursuit of who they are my dear worship leaders in our church, are you feeling disqualified by comparing yourself with the wrong people? Even as a man of God who are trying to rise up and those who are watching online, are you feeling disqualified? You are not up there by observing the flesh? Doesn't mean you are small, means you are holy. I'm not saying that. There are many famous people who are holy and doing it right. We got to die to this ego. And I remember I had to deal with a very sad case where, uh, a very sad case where this brother eventually, he was, came out of our team years ago. I'm talking about, say, 25 years ago. Came over to our team, he said, well, I don't need any more uh, counsel. Uh, God is speaking to me. The angels will tell me what to preach because he will say like what my brother and I will say when we are praying the Lord came. You know, you'll use all these phrases. Started his own church. Fantastic. Grew to 200 people. All within healings were taking place. Fantastic. But the need of recognition was not going off. So when revelation is absence, false doctrines will come in. And that's what started. False preaching. 
because you have the need for recognition, you want need for money. So it is. All the habits that the brother had before all started coming and his wife left him. He went into alcoholism again, started drinking, ministry stopped. He was found on the roadsides. Many pastors came in to help and I helped him for two years personally, day in and day out, together with him, everywhere, helping his ministry. And finally, he died as a nobody in a, ho uh, in a hotel, only to be discovered three days after. The wife became a Hindu after that. What happened in all this story? And there are just one. There are many like this. Because that ego, the enemy will use and resurrect that old ego. Because if he cannot deal with all this, your prayer, your pursuit, your seeking God, he cannot deal with all this. He will stir these seeds which you have killed. Try to resurrect that back. Now you'll grow with the truth and the false side by side. And because the false is stronger than the truth, it will start leaning on the wrong side. Are you following? You and I must learn to handle all this. You see, that is why sometimes if your past personality is a loner, and then you come into the house of God, you're, you're not changing, you're still behaving like a loner. Which part of God's presence is changing you? Because God places us in a community. Because in a community, there is safety, especially in this end time. So if you grow up like a loner, no matter, it can be a three people church, you are still alone. People say, oh, in a big church, I feel alone. Okay, smaller church. Still alone, smaller church. Feel alone, smaller church. Feel alone, husband, wife. Still alone. <laughs> Why? Because the seat of the loner is in you. It's nothing to do with the people anymore. Because people who talk, they'll find someone to talk when they're alone. They can make friends with people in the car park. They can talk to anybody. And some people have this gift. They can talk to anybody. Some people have a gift. Nobody who talks to them, they're still quiet. That's a gift. <laughs> because why the seed is there. Uh, who the enemy will look out for? These lone people, you see. It's easier to bring them out. Are you following? Because they don't know checks and balance. They don't want to ask anybody. You got to know in this end time, when God is trying to build, Paul was advocating. I wanted to be aware. So many false doctrines are floating around. And if I will... Put this entire thing in a blender and then give you the juice of what he's trying to say. Let me, I, I came up with this term. Paul is conveying, if anybody does stunts in the flesh to exert spiritual authority over others, but they themselves cannot control their indulgence of their flesh and their lusts, don't follow them. You got to follow not just the preaching, but their lifestyle. Correct? But when a person is given to greed and the lust for wealth, then obviously they will follow that only. Because your greed attracts those who are living in greed. Doesn't matter if they are preaching the gospel. But when you are holy, you will run after those who are holy. If you are living a sinful lifestyle, you look out for the church that approves it. That there is no condemnation, there is not conviction. Okay, everybody does it, okay. Hey, let's go for extreme grace, no problem. I won't feel condemned. The preaching is just, just too easy, man. It's like ice cream without taste. How's that? I just gave you a phrase. It doesn't exist, but I just created one. Paul challenges us in Colossians chapter 2, verse 17. You know, don't follow of the shadow of things to come. Look at that. Look at 17. These are a shadow of things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. 
And the word substance in the Greek is not, it's, a, it's not difficult to understand. It's just simply the whole life, whole picture, wholesome. You cannot just take abstracts, abstracts. One of the famous things people say, well, if their doctrine is wrong, how come their church is so big? That's all their line, their winning line. Then, then Taylor Swift must be a bishop, right? <laughs> because she's got what? I don't know how many million who's following her. Isn't it? I mean, she's really not that bad as the, some of the worst case scenario. People who go up to stay and do crazy stuff. She's still quite a bit decent. I, I don't follow, but I, I, time to time I read the news. <laughs> when I compare their dressing to the older other artists, it's not as bad as the others. Still some level of decency. But my point is, if, if bigness is the authentication certificate, then all these artists must be the bishops, right? We have my, many friends in, my, in Singapore, whenever we have this kind of talk, okay, tell me, then why is it growing? I don't know. Growth doesn't mean it's good. Every religion grows. Then why are they so successful? Success doesn't... That means that the richest person must be the godliest guy. Correct. What are you talking about? Do you allow your, your, your brains to be x-rayed or what, bro? Do you allow yourself to think through what you're saying? Or you're just throwing blankets there? Just out there. Then tell me why is it happening. No, Paul tells us to judge the truth. Amen? I want, I want to encourage us, you see, to pay attention. He, God is asking us to pay attention, not of shadow, but to substance. You must become a person of substance, and the substance is of who? Christ. Yes. It's not self-virtue. It is of Christ. When that of Christ is not seen, that means your substance is still not formed. That means you are still living in the shadow. You know, that's a lot of people say, right? I, I want to do this. I want to become. I want to. I want to. It is still in the formation stage. They are living in that shadow of either of someone in the past or someone's shadow of the future. But they're still empty at the moment. Paul is now saying, don't follow the shadow. Your substance must be of Christ. There's another scripture that says, he who compares himself to himself or to another is a fool. Let him compare himself to Christ. Are you following? All this is in the context of let no one disqualify you. Look at another scripture when... when Paul is talking about the wholesome growth. Wholesome growth, a growth that is built on God's word, is not built on a shadow system. God's word is complete. Amen? There is no holes in that. Why there is this emptiness of growth, especially in the prophetic community? Because somehow we think the word is not complete without some experience to follow through. I teach on experiences, I teach on encounters with God, and you know I do that. But if I don't have the encounters, I'm still encountering the Word. I'm not discouraged. I know the Lord now speaks to me through the Word. God can speak to me through worship. God can speak to me while I'm waiting. If God doesn't really speak to me, then God speak to me through others in the church. Because you're open to the various avenues, God can speak, right? Why we fail and get discouraged? Because the moment you can hear from God, you cut off others around you. Got to pay attention. Paul is now talking about substance. Now, now if I will rearrange the scripture a little bit, what I did was rearrange a little bit so that I can give you a clear understanding of how Paul is talking about it. I want to wrap up with 
this understanding how to avoid all these problems which I just mentioned. In verse 19, Colossians chapter 2, verse 19. He said, because they are not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body is nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. Pay attention now. Paul is talking about a quality growth. That growth that comes from God, it's not a human-generated growth. A growth which the Holy Spirit is working in your life. Now that Growth can only come when you are joined to the head. Tell me, if Christ is the head, who is the body? Correct, but supposed to be the house of God, the church, right? How many times there are many, many men, many preachers who are just freelance, but they not belong to anybody. They not belong to any church. In fact, I have stopped inviting for a long time ago freelance preachers who's not committed to any church. They don't have an, a system of accountability. Because you see, when you're not accountable to anybody, when you come and teach in our church, your spirit is imparted, right? You're going to impart that non-accountability behavior patterns, you see. I want you to pay attention to this. What God is saying. You cannot say you have a truth, but you're not submitted. And that is the same thing I keep saying over and over again. When God places you in a church, there is a pastor to watch over us. Yes or no? But there are people who are in the church, but the pastor is not their pastor. That guy is the church pastor. He's not my pastor. I'm just going. Then you are left open for these works to come through. Because you are not covered spiritually. Why do they rebel? Just like in a marriage covenant. Husbands, the Bible says, love your wives as Christ loves the church. Long lines. Wife must what? Do what? Let's say that again. Oh, God. (laughs) You don't like to hear the word. But it's the Bible in it. Well, the the truth to be told, a a wife can only submit to the husband who loves her like Christ loved the church. But do you know how Christ loved her? He was willing to die for her. That means in, in a marriage relationship, your love must be so intact, you're willing to give your life for one another if it needs be. Not many can say that. They are married for many years, but they're not willing to die for one another, bro. I've made a mistake once. I'm not going to do it again. (laughs) Therefore, in in, in those marriages, you won't find revelations taking place. God is true to his word. I'm not talking about marriage now. and It's not my business now for, for, for tonight. But however, if you really look at the way the Bible is talking about, Now, in the body of Christ, are there problems? Absolutely, yes. In the marriage, there are problems? Yes. Does a believer have a problem with God? Of course. We don't walk sometimes very peacefully. No, there is always anger, then forgiveness, there is mistakes and sin, and then walking in holiness and then falling back. And there is always this divine tension. But has God denied us? No, yes, no. He said, even if you're, if you're unfaithful, God is faithful. Remember 1 John. So he always follows up with his covenant. Because covenant overrides behaviors. And that's what marriage should be. Unless the marriage was not intact, it was not proper. Paul is tackling us. I've got to pay attention to those who are connected to the head. Because when you're connected to the head, you can't go wrong, can you? You can't. Because you're connected to the head. 
Paul is talking about hateless people who do not have Christ as Lord over their life. People always say, I, I, I receive a revelation. My question is from who did you get it from? If it's from God, there will be fruit in your life. Yeah. Pastor, I think that's your words and not from God. Let's, let's see. Holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments and, and say what? Grows. Grows with a growth that is from who? God. You see, that is the test. If you are connected to God and you receive a revelation or direction from God, the Lord told me to do this, the Lord told me to do that, then we have to see whether there is growth. And that growth must produce that comes from God. It cannot be a wrong produce. If it's a wrong produce, then let's go back and chase the whole thing back. Then you did not hear from God in the first place. Oh, but, but, oh, but I did hear. Then we have to go back again. Are you committed to the house and which house, which church? Oh, no, I belong to the universal body of Christ. Fantastic. <laughs> a lot of people fall into this bracket. Oh, you know, we cannot trust the church. You are the church. That means you cannot trust yourself. You know, we have a problem called cutting, right? What, what, what we call? What problem is this? Hmm? You know, the youths are cutting themselves. It's a demonic work, you know. And that's what we are doing in the body of Christ. We are cutting each other. We are cutting each other up. Because why they are not connected to the head? And Paul is tackling that. If, uh, in order for the truth of God to come, you need to be connected to the head. You need to be connected. You see, the word hold fast in the Greek is kratio. In other words, you'll be strong, you'll be mighty, you'll be able to prevail when the church experiences an anointing, that anointing flows over into the house. When the church prospers, you will prosper. We heard that with Linda's uh, testimony. When the church has a revelation, you will have a revelation. When the church is flowing in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you will follow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When the church experiences the favor of God and open breakthroughs, you and your family will experience because you will experience what you are under, you see. Paul is saying because we are connected, to the head, you will experience that. But then there is another scripture, Paul is saying, I'm telling you, man, he challenges us in every way. Look at that. I want to show you. Um, okay, verse 23. Earlier, I did not mention this word to you. Verse 23 again. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion, asceticism, and, and what? Severity to the body. It means they torture their own body. Are you following? You know, I'm thinking, you know, when I'm, now I'm a modern guy, in this 2024, when I'm reading, oh, is he talking about Hinduism? Is he talking about the gurus who... Go into the Himalayas. If you go to Himalayas, that's a, because Himalayas, uh, Mount Everest, is worshipped as the place of the gods, the Hindu gods. Okay? You will go there and you will see many Hindu gurus. And these are not the ordinary gurus. Are the, it, now, this fellas, to be fair, to just make a comment, okay? They are not the false fellas. They, they are the real fellas. That means they really pray. They they really sacrifice their life. They really follow after the true living God, whatever the God is, for them. Usually they are naked. You know what is Mount Everest temperature? They are naked. They live inside their caves. They don't eat. This is how they travel out of their body. We call the soul transference. They travel out of their body and they go and do stuff in the soul. Many things happen, but that's not our subject today, so I'm not going to talk about it. The Buddhism experience the same thing. They can sit 
in one place, meditate for hours, but their body lives. Their spirit, their soul lifts their body and they can do things. They can have sex with people. And one of the things that people do in yoga and kundalini groups, beautiful girls come, always attracted to the male guru. And then in the night they will have dreams of this guy having sex. It was not a dream. This guy really came out of his body, goes into physically, will have sexual relationships with the girls, and then he'll come back. For them, it's a dream. What happens? A desire is planted, and then they will desire him, you see. I can keep on telling you all these things. How, what happens in those kind of areas where there is an unauthorized access to experience out-of-body experiences which is not authorized by God. How did anybody know this language? That was how, what happened when the sons of God came down. They gave the false access information to Nimrod, and Nimrod is the founder of false religion and witchcraft. He opened that portal, now you can have the access what Adam lost by same power of meditation. Then we come to the Western Christianity. The moment you say meditation, oh, that's, that's New Age Asian religions. No, it's not. It's Bible. Bible says meditate on his word. So we have given up many of the privileges of the sons and daughters of God, original version of it, just because someone else stole those principles. Okay? Are you following? Now he says, listen, you cannot torture your body because if you do all these things, sadly, Paul is now saying, they have no value in stopping the indulgence of your flesh. So the point that I'm trying to say, oh, I fasted for 21 days, yet you behave still like a monster, then what, what did you really put down? You put down on what? If it's not changing you, then it was the fasting was an act of religious exercise, but it was not a transformation of the spirit. In every fasting, it is not just not eating. Equal time to be spent with the word. Listen, are you listening or not? Yeah. You see, people say, oh, I pray. I don't eat but I don't have time for the word. Every time you say you don't have time for the word, that transformation effect cannot take place. Transformation only takes place when the word is involved. What happens? I pray, but I don't read the Bible. You just become prayerful, that's all. <laughs> because Paul said you must be transformed in your mind through the word. So that is why there is an imbalance in our life. We can pray long, but the indulgence of the flesh is still alive. Will we get angry? Of course, all will. But if you get angry in seconds like that, that means the fruit of the Spirit is not transforming you enough. We don't need anybody to judge us. We become our judge. Paul is saying, you kill your body. You deny this, you deny that, I, I don't watch TV. But your TV is already running inside you. So what if you don't watch? People are, oh, I, I don't have time to watch the TV. You're already playing drama inside your mind, killing other people, talking about them. That's murder story going on here. You know, last time there's a very beautiful, nice series called The Murder She Wrote. <laughs> yes. huh? I, I, I just came to know she, she died, huh? years ago. Beautiful, nice story. You know, very old lady. She, she, she writes everything and it works out that way. <laughs> so you can be, not be watching TV, but it is running inside. Oh, I'll put down my flesh. But then, where is the fruit? Paul is asking this question. It, it has an appearance of wisdom, you know. It's very admirable. But it's as though you are promoting your self-spirituality. Oh, you know, when I pray, when I talk to God. Just because you say things in slow motion doesn't make you holy. You know? <laughs> uh, 
People want to, <laughs> oh God, people want to imitate Catherine Kuhlman sometimes, you know. I mean, it's the way she talks. You, you got to see her video. Sometimes, you know, thank God YouTube can do times two talk. And he can finish the language. Sometimes when you listen to people, some, some people preach in monotone. You know, the Bible says, it's great, fantastic, but we want to see the fruit. So when you are praying, when God's Holy Spirit is at work with you, there must be a growth that comes from God. And if you are so many years in God, and you're still struggling like the day you accepted Christ, that means there is a mistake or something is wrong with that production line that is going on. Is it too late? No. Oh, but you know I was in the wrong church. Now you're in the right church, right? Where you see, but you know where I come from. I don't want to know. Let's talk about where you are now. Everybody is thinking when this is another Pentecostal church. No, this uh, Pentecostal church is rooted in God. Honestly worship Jesus as Lord. Amen. When will we defend and stand for it? You know. It's never too late to bear fruit. It's never too late. I thought, well, walking in God for 39 years now, I, I, I've quite matured, but the more I'm growing, the more flesh I'm discovering. Not the old flesh, but new flesh is coming out. <laughs> that means, till I die, i got to keep this body under. Paul says, lest I become disqualified. Regardless of what you do, let nobody admire your torture to your spiritual life, your torture to your body. Because you have to produce a growth that comes from God. Don't admire, you know how he prays, how he doesn't look at anybody, and then how does he walk? Oh, he walks somehow. No, no, no. This torturing of the issue is not there. There is no value in stopping this indulgence of the flesh. And so we have to come to that. We've got to hold fast to the head. And who is the head? Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is why coming back to your Bible study, reading your Bible, you don't need to know Greek and Hebrew. Don't worry, that's our job. We'll teach you. But your job is to read. Your job is to have an overall understanding of what the Word is. You can be reading one chapter a day. It's okay. Your growth will be slow, you see. You've got to feed your spirit. Your anointing is to grow faster. Feed it. Strengthen it. You know, in spiritual life, it is possible to pray enough until you feel so full and you're overflowing. You can read the Bible. It just hits you right there and you've got to stop for a while because the revelation is just filling you up. Like God puts a host in you you got to take it off for a while. And that revelation will go with you sometimes for a month. It will just lift you up. But sometimes we have experienced emptiness for so long, we don't know what it is to be full. It is okay to come before the Lord and say, God, would you fill me up? Remember we talked about it. Let God fill you up with his fullness. In line with what the Lord showed about Tonight, false demonic powers and spirits. Am I too overly concerned? No. If I can pay attention to God's word and I'm not detached left or right, I'm not worried about everything else, then I got to pay attention to the truth. Pastor Stephen, one guy told me this. Why you have to talk about others instead of just preaching yours? You see, people don't know what the fivefold office is. Those who are the office bearers of the fivefold office, called by God, not self-made or your church appointed, you know. The office that comes from God, you are required to establish the order of God. You are required to establish order and discipline. You will not just going to exhort, you're going to correct as well. But those who don't have the office, but they are just pastors in place, they will not speak. Their preaching is very suggestive, not directive. 
Did Jesus ever suggest it to us about heaven? No, bro, he was directing you. You think Paul was suggesting many things? No, he was directing you. When God is speaking to your life, he's directing you. The preaching is not if you like, but it is this is the way the Lord shows it. Amen? So God wants us to know such things. We admire the indulgence of the flesh. We admire the severity to those who say, I torture my body and all that is good. All that is great. Because you find in the Catholic tradition, some of them will beat themselves and do this and do that like penitents. You see, they are paying penance. Because they did not know the truth. We know the truth, but is it not truth as well? We are not repenting deep enough for that change to take place. My brothers and sisters, today we pay attention to God's word. Let no one put you down. Let no one disqualify you based on how long they are praying, how long they are seeing vision, whether they are going into heaven and you are not. Can I tell you one truth before I finish? Seeing visions or seeing heaven and experiencing angels and all that revelations that we have, it's not a formula. That means you pray 10 hours, you'll see it. You can't. It only comes because of God's sovereignty. Your call that you carry carries that sovereignty. There are many prophets, stronger and bigger and whoever than Sadhu, but he don't see what Sadhu can see. Why? Because the call of God rests on him to be a prophet of the Lord, to warn the nations of the world. Because of that call and his dedication and his consecration before God, the Lord prepared him from day one to be who God wants him to be. And that is why when he prays, heaven opens. So it's not a formula. I've spoken to my brother as well. I've spoken to my brother, you know. Why are you telling everybody can see all this? You know it cannot. Yeah, but I want to encourage them. Yeah, I can. But they may be thinking it will still happen. So I want to encourage you. Don't disqualify you. Neither must you stay behind instead of pushing forward. Lord, speak to me in your own way. If the word is the beginning your way, then let the word speak to you. I can prove enough scriptures, which is again not our topic tonight. I can show you scriptures to show there are Old Testament guys who have not seen heaven or experienced those things, but the revelation of the word produces heaven in their writings. I can show you scriptures. I'll get very surprised. How did they know it? Because they are praying. The revelation, they were not taken up to heaven, but heaven came inside them and they are writing it like poetry. So I want to encourage you tonight. Be rooted in his word. Pray that God will produce the fruit that comes from God. Your faith must become one inch stronger than before. Your faith level of giving or receiving one inch stronger than yesterday. You are one inch stronger spiritually, holy minded. When you wake up, there is a song of the Lord that is going inside you rather than Michael Jackson singing. <laughs> Why Michael Jackson is singing? Because last night you played that song, it's restored inside. These are all the self-check things, okay? I'm just encouraging you. Self-check. Be mindful. And everybody you know how long I'm fasting. Paul says, oh, all this is good. But if you are torturing your body, that's not what Christianity is all about. We are caught in this challenge. One part, God is asking us to walk with him like him. Another part, Paul is saying, be like Jesus, but don't be like the Pharisee. You have to measure your own yardstick. Am I being like Christ or am I being a Pharisee? Do people be attracted to the Christ I'm having 
in my heart or are they attracted to my prayer life? Are you following? Without realizing, we admire man instead of admiring the God that man is following. We got to pay attention. Got to pay attention. Can we all rise up together and pray? Father, we thank you for your word. We want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you. Your word brings clarity. Your word brings the path of heaven. Your word shows us what needs to be done today. We pray, God, that, Lord, you give us the desire, the teaching of your word, desire your word. Help us to watch out for false manifestation. When the truth in, is in us, the Bible says the truth will set us free. Therefore, we pray for our sons and daughters in Jesus' name. Protect our hearts and our mind through the word. We speak God's protection and a hedge of protection all around our children. Our sons and daughters, we pray the hedge of protection. They will not walk away from that hedge. We speak protection over their lives. Even if they do not know Christ, God, we speak protection that they will not become so wayward that cannot be turned back. I pray, God, that will be a grace leech. No matter how far they run, they are within the grace of God. So I pray in the name of Jesus for tonight, your name and your word, let it be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake somebody's hand and bless them in Jesus' name.